If there is one thing I should tell people about Kemco's RPGs, it's that they're not from the same developer. Some people out there think they develop them all in-house, but really they take games from a lot of different people. Fern's Gate, Meridian Tavern Story, and today's game are all from three different developers. Kemco just publishes them. And that's one thing I really like. You're getting a lot of different kinds of RPGs, even if some of them use the same sort of formula. But let's not drag this on too long. I've got a retro RPG to review today, so here is my review of Cronus Arc for the Nintendo Switch. Cronus Arc is set in a world that revolves around the Time Rewinding Festival, where special objects called the Cronus Fragments are gathered, and time is literally rewound for certain items, mending them as long as the gods deem them worthy of being mended and being used once again. You play as Loka, a newly appointed Sorcerer Knight, those who are tasked with gathering the Kronos Fragments for the Time Rewinding. In the middle of your initiation, though, your master disappears when a gang of thieves show up to steal away all of the Kronos Fragments to use for their own means. You then go on an adventure with a childhood friend to track down the master and retrieve those fragments so the Time Rewinding can commence as planned. As far as the story goes, I like the setup of this whole Time Rewinding thing. But as much as I like it, it feels like there's not much to the story outside of that. There's not a whole lot of character development, and the story overall just feels very short. This also ties into the pacing of the game that I'll get into later, but really it's just one of those situations where I feel like they could have done so much more with it. When it comes to gameplay, Cronus Arc is a retro turn-based RPG like the RPGs from EXE Create, but with some upgrade and puzzle elements thrown into the mix. You have your normal retro RPG progression where you can wander around a world map, go into towns and dungeons, and you have turn-based battles with enemies and bosses. But there are three things that make this game a little bit unique. First of all, all of the dungeons have a certain puzzle element to them. A lot of locked doors aren't a matter of just wandering around and finding a key. You have to push around rocks and pick up pots to activate switches in 2D Zelda fashion to move forward. Secondly, you can gather materials by fighting monsters or collecting them around dungeons that are used to upgrade your weapons and armor. And those upgrades aren't just making them stronger. Each piece of equipment can actually branch out into different pieces depending on what you put into them, like a sword going from a regular sword to either a fire element sword or an ice element sword. And finally, we have character classes. Once a character reaches level 30, you can use a special item to move them into a different class, like Paladin, Amazonas, or an Idol. Each class has a different type of stat distribution, but also lets you learn new skills to use on top of keeping the skills you have from your old classes. This essentially lets you amass a huge range of skills and not forcing you to be one class if you want to be something else stat-wise. Of course, the items necessary to change classes aren't exactly easy to come by. They're bought with a special in-game currency, so it's not like you can just go through the game like normal and spam class changes to amass huge amounts of skills without working for it. And that leads us into that in-game currency and microtransactions. Whenever you're in a town, you can basically trade monster kills for in-game currency. 10 kills for 2 mana, and you can use mana in a special shop to buy special equipment, like keys to secret dungeons or those items needed for class changes. In the mobile version, you could buy more of this currency by paying real money. In the console version, you can't. The only microtransaction exclusive items in the console version are the cheat items that let you triple experience or disable random encounters. But that also brings up how much of a grind this game is. Each of these class advancement items, or the rings that increase experience or gold acquired, cost about 70 or 80 mana apiece. And when you have to kill 10 monsters to get 2 mana, that means each time you need one of these items, let alone more, you're going to be killing 100, 150, 200 monsters just to do it. 
And that's not where the grinding stops. Let's talk about the difficulty of this game. There are no difficulty settings like easy, normal, or hard like in the EXE Create games, and the difficulty of this game spikes a lot. When I got to each individual dungeon and boss fight, I gathered all the materials and upgraded all of my equipment as far as it could go until I found material requirements that I couldn't find in the dungeons I was at. This started as just a little fun factor thing for me, but when I realized that even when I did that, and the next dungeon opened up and I was getting thrashed like I was severely underleveled all over again, I realized that this game is designed for you to make that grind all the time, every time a difficulty spike happens. And that's not even talking about the big major bosses of the game that require an even more significant grind. You're gonna be doing a lot of grinding and I feel this hurts the pacing and overall longevity of the game. Not in terms of playtime hours, but in terms of what all is there. I spent almost 20 hours on the game before I got to the final boss. And I would say about a third of that, maybe a little more, wasn't grinding. And that's what I meant in the story section. The amount of grinding makes it feel like there's not very much to the game outside of that. In terms of story and character development versus how much time you're going to be spent grinding. A lot normally happens in an RPG story, but even though this game took me almost 20 hours to beat, it felt like very little actually happened in the story. And now let's get into presentation. This game mimics the Super Nintendo style of Final Fantasy V or VI, and doesn't really do much else. As such, a lot of the character sprites look a bit blurry in docked mode. It doesn't look terrible, but it doesn't look good either. There's just a severe lack of polish that most Camco published RPGs normally have. I don't have anything bad to say about performance, so let's go right into battery life, which, as I expected, is very, very good because this is a 2D RPG. Cronus Arc has a battery range of 4 hours and 58 minutes on high settings, up to 6 hours and 59 minutes on low settings. Now, in conclusion, Cronus Arc is an interesting retro RPG that has Zelda-like puzzles in a nifty little upgrade system that I haven't seen in many RPGs. Granted, the game is brought down by the story pacing, the grinding, and the huge difficulty spikes, but if you're itching for a new Switch RPG from Kemco, it's a decent little journey. Reviews to Go rates Cronus Arc for the Nintendo Switch a 6 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below or head to the website at reviewstogo.com.